one, two, and a three. Meow, meow. How you doing? Hopefully you're doing an absolutely wonderful day. Have great time in all places. Maybe happy. Goodness is good and things. Also, here's a statue of America. I think it's America. I, I don't. I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, welcome back. God's blessings be upon ye. I have gathered uh, a good portion of the. Oh, this is going to be the spiritual uh, playthrough type video. Lol, lol, lol. But um, I've gathered a, a good portion of the thingy mahoozits, the golden seeds and the sacred tears and stuff like that. But there's a few more we still need to get. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the north. Uh, and we're going to start here. And uh, yeah, today we're going to be talking a little bit more about uh, the Isa Upanishad. Well, this is, we didn't really talk about the Isa Upanishad last time. Isa, uh, I've sometimes heard it called Isha Upanishad. But it, it's one of the shorter Upanishads, and it is, a, I think, a very good place to begin if you're interested in such things. It's also, because it's nice and short, it's only 18 verses total, we can kind of break them down and really go into them. And I also thought it would be kind of interesting to maybe talk a little bit about like who uh, God is and uh, you know, why does it mean so much? For instance, when someone uh, is like an avatar or, you know, claim to be an avatar. Because, you know, something that's kind of interesting is that uh, there's this joke that Swami Sarapriyananda like to, oh wait, Let, let's save this person. This person here, you see, is actually, it's not a bush. I think I can just roll into it if I... There we go. You were a bush? Do you remember being a bush? Well, yeah. The name's Bok. Was... Okay, Bok, you look like you're having a hard time talking here. Oh, wait. No, they can't see. Um, no, look, Bok, you look like you're having a hard time talking here, but at the same time... It's okay, Bok. Well, it's when they threw me out of the cave, they took everything, so this is all I have, I hope. Oh, I don't need anything for you to express your thanks, my guy. You're cool and good. Don't worry, we're going to do this guy's quest and help him out. It is a part of our noble journey. But yeah, you know, uh, Sony Serapi and another has this joke where he, he talks about uh, two Swami's talking. I can't remember what their names are, but uh, he talks about these two Swami talking. And he says that one Swami is always like, oh, here, I'll, I'll tell you a secret. And he's like, oh, I, and I already knew what secret he was going to tell. And he said, okay, go on, Maharaj. And he says, no, 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 close the door. Make sure no one's listening. He's like, okay, no, Maharaj, no one's listening. He says, Sri Ramakrishna, he's got himself. And then Swami goes, I know. And the Swami goes, you know. He's like, yes, everybody knows and nobody cares. <laughs> and it was actually kind of one of his videos that I think mentioned this that kind of got me thinking about this. Um, we, we frequently talk about like who God is and like the idea of like there being a God or there not being a God and stuff like that. But we, we rarely kind of reconcile with the idea of like, God is, like, what is God? What is, like, the, the scope, the scale of God? God is greater than everything. God is within everything. You know, like, God is the whole of the universe. Like, everything within the universe is made up of God. Like, we, we kind of don't tend to think about that very often. The way we tend to think of it is, like, you know, God is, like, um, God is, like, sacred in the sense of being, like, uh, the idol or, like, you know, like, okay, like, God is sacred in being like, oh, like it's Krishna. Yeah, yeah, that, that's sacred, right? Or like we think about, um, you know, Kali or any of these other things. But, but these are truly just uh, images that we use to understand this thing that is so much greater than us that we can't really properly conceive it. And words don't really do justice to like the sheer scale and power and, you know, uh, presence of God and it's also kind of interesting because if you think about the way people think of God you can see that in many ways there tend to be a fairly dualistic con uh, conception of God we, we tend to think of God more as um, 
Oh, I did jump up there to get it? I guess so. Wait, I get... No, I got this. Wait, wait. Okay, maybe. Okay, maybe I had to get off the horse. There we go. I'm not lonely, nor is he, because now he has me, friend. Pat head. Pat, pat, pat. Wait. Pat, 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 pat head. Okay. Now we can continue on. But, you know, like, like the, the sheer power and scale of God is not something we tend to think about. But, like, and it's also this kind of dualistic conception is the one that tends to, like, be where most people focus. But the truth is, um, you know, those of us in the know, if you will, know that God is actually uh, non-dualistic. God is the essence of all of creation. God is the will behind all of creation. God is the consciousness, the bliss behind all of creation, right? So that kind of frames things in, a, oh, there's a bear down there. Is there, is there anything down there I should, do I have any reason to go down there and grab anything? Not really. I think it might be easier to just ignore that for now. What's up, dead wolves? I guess they're all leading to the bear cave. It's like a little warning for you, huh? Which is nice. Oh, I can just summon some... Oh, it's like the ghost of the wolves are helping me. That's Oh, that man, that's really cool. But first, let's go here into this uh, church and get this thingy. Because uh, I haven't actually used... I, I've gathered a bunch of them, but I haven't actually used any like the golden seeds or anything yet. It's a third church of America. We get to come here and we get to use... We could also grab this. Isn't this wonderful? And we'll also grab this. Excellent. Well, here, let's use the ones we got. Actually, you know what? No, let's let's continue our journey without upgrading these yet, because I think it would be kind of fun to go up against that bear without upgrading. We'll just use ourselves and the power of our wolfies. But anyway. The truth is that, as far as I can tell anyway, and the way it makes logical sense to me, is that God is in fact non-dualistic. God is everything and is in everything and is in within all of us. The thing that makes this conception of God interesting, though, is that, that wouldn't that not imply that on... Oh, wait. Oh. Okay. Oh, can I not also summon... I guess I cannot also summon wolves here, so... Never mind, I may have messed up, but let's see what happens. I'm gonna try and help these wolves. <laughs> get over here and get hit with my sword. I am not doing very much damage to you. Yeah, I'm really not. Wow, well, wait. Can I, oh, no, no. Wrong one. Ah, dang it. Sorry, wolfies. Okay, I'll be quicker next time, I promise. Okay. Slash, slash, slash. Oh. Jeez, this is like a boss. Nope, never mind. I died. Yeah, I think my sword is a little too low for that. Maybe I need to upgrade my sword a little bit just to do a little bit more damage. But it's okay. Not a really big deal. Actually, I don't even know how many souls I dropped. Or runes, whatever. But anyway. Uh, but this tends to imply things like, well, how can there truly be things that are, like, impure if everything is actually made of God? How can things... Uh, how can there be evil unless it is in self God? You know, things like that. It's very interesting to think about. And I think the conception of God being the all in all, the whole of, you know, maybe I'll try one more time because why not? Why not try to help the wolfies one more time? Not that it really cost me anything. Wait. Oh, they're going to attack me too. I forgot. Oh. oh, excuse me. Fine. In that case, I'll just take the smithing stone and go. You guys have fun dealing with it if you're going to be mean to me. Ugh. It's okay, I'll just respawn later anyway. But, um... You know, like, that, that is, like, the essence of who God is. In terms of, like, Vedanta and, and non-dual Tantra. So, that, I just kind of wanted to put that out there, because I think it's an interesting thing that we kind of dwell on very often. But I also think... Hey, 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 Don't do that. That's rude. But here, I'll go ahead and do this first. Okay, and then we're going to go back. And here, we're going to hang out in the church for just a second while I read a little bit of the Isu Upanishad. But I think, because I think that all, uh, the idea helps frame some of the Upanishad. So this is the very first line. All this, whatever exists in this changing universe, should be covered 
by the Lord. Protect the self by renunciation. Lust not after any man's wealth. If a man wishes to live a hundred years on this earth, he should live performing action. For you, who cherish such desire and regard yourself as a man, there is no other way by which you can keep work from clinging to you. Verily, those worlds of the Asuras are enveloped in blind darkness, and thereto they all repair after death, who are the slayers of the Atman. That non-dual Atman, though never stirring, is swifter than the mind, the senses cannot reach it, for it moves ever in front. Thus, though standing still, it overtakes others who are running. Because of Atman Vayu, the world soul appropriates the activities of all. It moves and moves not. It is far and likewise near. It is inside all of this and it is outside all of this. The wise man beholds all beings in the self and the self in all beings. For that reason, he does not hate anyone. Yeah, so this is kind of going into what I was talking about, the idea of like, if God is truly all pervasive and is within all and is all, then how can you truly hate anybody? How can you be like, how can there be good or evil in the sense of there being like uh, these opposite, truly hard forces, which I don't think there are. And uh, you can also get into the idea of, you know, how can there be pure, impure and things like that. And, and it's also very interesting because for something that is so beyond us, we kind of have to use this um, contradictory language at times for, you know, it moves and it moves and moves not. It is far and likewise near. It is inside all this and it is outside all this. So, you know, it is inside everything, but it is also not necessarily like uh, just the creation itself is not like the whole of its parts. It is beyond this as well. And that was all the way to verse six. Now we're going to verse seven. To the seer, all things have verily become the self. What delusion, what sorrow can there be? for him who beholds that oneness. So like once you behold the oneness and once you like really get that idea and really cling to that idea, it's like, oh, there can be no sorrow. There can be no um, distress. There can be no fear for it is all one. It is all that pure uh, consciousness that is also that pure bliss. Know what I mean, Jimmy Dean? And I know some of these ideas can be a little confusing, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go... We'll continue going through. It is he who pervades all, he who is bright and bodiless, without scar or sinews, pure and by evil unpierced, who is the seer, omniscient, transcendent, and uncreated. He has duty allotted to the eternal world, creators their respective. He has allotted, he has duly allotted to the eternal world, creators their respective duties. Into a blind darkness they enter, who are devoted to ignorance rituals but into a greater darkness they enter who engage they enter who engage in the knowledge of a deity alone so this is kind of describing how like it's not the rituals and it's not just like the deity as we understand like you know like Vayu like it mentions Vayu who if you don't know in like the Vedic times is basically like the spirit of like the wind but is also kind of like the spirit of like space basically like as in free space and things like that and can like sort of be like considered like all like empty space more or less it's kind of interesting it, it depends who you ask and what text you're reading um oh this is uh here let's get this map So this is Limegrave East. This is a good little place to go into. Takes you down to a big spooky place. But we're going to continue going. Take this. A couple of the tiers that we can use for the wondrous flask. Um... But yeah, it, it's not just the rituals. The rituals themselves, uh, like the idea in a lot of texts is basically that uh, you can do the rituals and you may get results from doing the rituals, 
but it is not the rituals themselves which truly matter and it's not the rituals which liberate it is you know the knowledge the jnana of the divine the the true divine that is beyond all of these uh smaller conceptions of divinity that is where you truly get the um that's where you truly get freedom which is, you know, like I said, I think that's a pretty interesting way to look at the divine. One thing they say is obtained from knowledge. Another they say from ignorance. Thus we have heard from the wise who have taught us this. He who is aware that both knowledge and ignorance should be pursued together. One second. Overcomes death through ignorance and obtains immortality through knowledge. Into a blind darkness they enter who worship only the unmanifested Prakriti. But into a greater darkness they enter who worship the manifested. Here in Yagarbha. I, I don't know how to say that, actually. One thing they say is obtained from the worship of the manifested. Another they say from the worship of the unmanifested. Thus we have heard from the wise who have taught us this. This is essentially saying that you can worship God in both the manifest and the unmanifest, and there's downsides, uh, there's there's goods and downsides to both, but if you do both, that's the truly enlightened path, is what the issue of Panishad is saying here. It's saying that, like, you, there's reasons that neither is, like, the 100% true version, the, the true vision. He who knows that both the unmanifest and the unmanifest Prakriti and the manifested should be worshipped together overcomes death by the worship of the... I, I guess I could have save my explanation till the next force. But uh, obtains immortality through devotion of Prakriti. The door of the truth is covered by a golden disc. Open it, O nourisher. Remove it so that I who have been worshipping the truth may behold it. O nourisher, lone traveler of the sky, controller, O sun, offspring... Aparajapati, gather your rays, withdraw your light. I would see through your grace that form of yours, which is the fairest. I am indeed he, that Purusha who dwells there. So he he's basically, in a roundabout way, kind of requesting himself because he is actually, you know, the manifest and the unmanifest of, of God to show him the way. He's asking basically himself to show him the way because the self is the true illuminator here. Now may my breath return to the all-pervading immortal Purana. May this body be burnt to ashes. Om, oh mind, remember, remember all that I have done. O oh fire, lead us by the good path for the enjoyment of the fruit of our action. You know, O oh God, all our deeds destroy our sin of deceit. We offer by words our salutations to you. So basically, this is just a really long, well, not really long, but you know, it's a, it's like a long uh, salutation to God, saying thank you, God, for like revealing these things to me, and that I know that the truth is neither strictly in the manifest or the unmanifest, but in fact in both, and that the the true peace which I seek is, you know part of both the manifest and the unmanifest excuse me and and then like by worshipping them together and understanding them together oh gotta keep moving don't mind me don't mind me I, I am just a just a little silly billy friend here just, you know, taking a few pictures, looking around for some stuff. Oops. Can I do it while I'm in here? I can't. Cool. I don't know if those wolves will actually beat that guy, but they might make him back up at least a little bit. Well, I don't even know what they're focusing on anymore. They're certainly doing something. Hey, you're not supposed to do that. That's rude. You have a big sword, sir. Hmm. 
Oops. Didn't roll fast enough there. Oh. Fire bad. But yeah. Hey, burn my burn my body to ashes. Hey, it works. <laughs> But and Isha is not my, necessarily my favorite because of some of the language it uses. But I, I do think that it really still gets across the point of like. Oh, OK, it's like, wait, what? It's actually right there. I'm silly. Oh, I also have my miracles. I shouldn't forget those. But, um. You know, like the, this, this essence, this thing that we worship is truly like beyond the beyond. And is like, it is both that unmanifested. Oops, I'm doing bad. There we go. It is both that unmanifested reality as well as the manifested reality. It is in fact, uh... in some sense the owner of all things and like the the essence of all things and uh, i'm going to just go up here don't mind me hey you guys just have fun hey hey stop it oh haha oh hee -ha. hee <laughs> you can't blood on me when I'm up here. Oh, he's coming. Oh, well, well that's fine. I get what I came here for. Maybe we can get out. So this is... Well, you're supposed to move, my lady. That's not moving. I think this just gives me half. Oh no, I don't. I didn't put the thing in it. I'm silly. Nope. Oh, well, now I gotta go back up there. Eh, well, is it even worth doing it for the two thousand souls? Probably not. So I'm not gonna. Instead, we're going to go to the red zone to get more things. More horrible, horrible things. I think the best, fastest way to, the, yeah. So it'd just be like going that way. Okay. But yeah, so I think this is very important to think about. Like, what is the true essence of God? What, you know, like we, we talk about uh, searching for truth and searching for uh, reality. What is reality? But it turns out that. It, the further you investigate, especially if you investigate into the self, the more you realize that, oh, it's not just that, like, God is not just that, like, distant knowledge, it's just like that light there, but God is also, you know, just like this horse close to us. Both! Wow! Isn't that neat? And it kind of frames the discussion of what are we truly searching after in a different light? And, like, once we start focusing we can realize that there are multiple these multiple paths that we can take to get to the divine and we also realize that the divine is hey sh 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 sh. no wolfing at me young man i'm going this away and gathering supplies while i do so oh i see you guys are sending a little bit of grass on our that's nice nice little grass area for you whoops i need to go over this way more uh, and and those things are important to understand together and to understand, like, you know, the nature. What is the real nature of God? What is the nature of what we are truly, like, you know, searching for? And I think by just having... Oops. Well. well that's fine. I thought I was going to take damage with that. Excuse me. Sorry. Excuse me. Um... And to think about, like, uh, the Upanishads are pretty good about just, you know, Can you hear me? Help me. I'm stuck. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll help you, stuck lad. B. 
Because I'm a nice lady. Uh huh. I, I hear you, bud. Oh, my stars! I'm so happy to see you. Mm hmm. Um, Alexander, please. I just give me a good and I'll pop. Don't dally. Give it your all, I say. He's so well trained that if you hit him, it doesn't work. There we go. How'd you get stuck there? But it's fine. Well played, good lady. Well played. Oh, that mighty wallop of yours. <laughs> well, I'm out now. I thank you. Thank you for some flesh. Once again, I journey to the east, where I intend to further my adventure. And beyond these lands, upon their southern edge. I've heard whispers of Sir doesn't the notion <laughs> uh, I'm headed to Redmain. I've heard Oh, uh, what a nice man. What a nice jar man. Anyway, for right now that's that's uh what we'll go through with this. And I think it's something to, that's important to meditate on is the how that duality that is apparent within us and within the world is actually a falsehood. And remember that God is ever present, despite what may seem. Okie dokie. Well, I hope that you all have an absolutely wonderful day and remember the blessings of God. And I hope that you have a blessed day. And uh, I love you and God loves you. And bye-bye. Love you. Bye. Have a great day.